Nearly half a century after the Carnation Revolution rid Portugal of military dictatorship, the far right making huge inroads in Sunday's snap general election. Chega going from 12 to 48 seats in the next parliament. The center-right Democratic Alliance is for now poised to get first crack at forming a government after corruption scandals sank the outgoing socialists. But uh, results are still provisional and uh, they just have a two-seat uh, edge. There's no clear path to a coalition. Our coverage begins in Lisbon. Pedro Cordero is international affairs editor uh, for the uh, uh, news magazine Expresso. Thank you for being with us here on France 24. My pleasure. So uh, how are the Portuguese taking in these, again, provisional results? We don't know who's going to form the next government. Well, we do have a hint, uh, Francois, because uh, yesterday the, the centre-right alliance claimed its right to be the first one to try and form a government, and the socialists who were in government for the last eight years and were defeated uh, uh, said that they would uh, go to opposition, so this suggests that they will at least abstain, uh, if necessary, to let the, the, the democratic alliance govern. Uh, the, what is more uh, difficult to foresee is how the, the, center -right, the future centre-right government will be able to pass legislation in parliament, given that they lack a, a, an outright majority, and they have also steadily refused to uh, talk to to uh, open any talks or any pacts with the far right party who uh, really was uh, one of the big winners of last night so could portugal become germany you could have grand coalitions well i i don't think there will be a grand coalition in terms of both big parties being in government together because that would leave the opposition open to the far right but i do think do believe that the socialists while staying in opposition may on a case by case basis uh, evaluate and eventually reach some pacts with the with the center right uh, government because it i don't think it is in anyone's interest even in the considering selfish interests of parties and not just a national interest, I don't think anyone is keen on provoking a new crisis and uh, another snap election in month. I think the Portuguese are quite, uh, uh, have, quite, have had quite enough of elections. And we usually, as Portuguese electors, usually punish those who create gridlock or lead to snap elections when the people do not wish for them. Yeah, Portugal with a reputation of uh, uh, moderation, pragmatism. We're coming up to the 50th anniversary of the Carnation Revolution. How are people taking in the news that, well, the far right has made those historic inroads? Well, it, it is really sad for many people that the, the half century of our democratic revolution will be tainted by the presence of 48, at least 48, 48 MPs from a clearly xenophobic party uh, uh, in parliament. However, this was the result of inroads they made, even uh, within abstention. You know, for the first time in many years, the, the voter turnout rose uh, significantly. And what we have, <clears throat> we have been reading from this provisional results is that many people who were not voting in the last few elections uh, did vote this time, but for the far right. So they, they managed, you have to give them that, the, the, the Shega party managed to make people who were not voting for the traditional parties come to the election and vote for them, which, is, which means that also the, ra the, the rise of the Shega party is also a failure of the moderate center-right and center-left parties, and even of the far-left uh, pro traditional protest parties in representing large swathes of the electorate. Pedro Cordero, so many thanks for joining us from Lisbon. Please, it's my pleasure. Anytime.